watercolour palettes come in all shapes and sizes. They come in metal, ceramic, plastic, but which is the right one for you? What are the pros and cons? That's what we're going to try and sort out. My name's Liz Chatterton. I'm a watercolour artist based in Berkshire and every week I share a tip, trick or technique that I wish I'd known about ages ago. And this week it's trying to find the perfect palette for you. Hate to break it to you, but there is no such thing as a perfect watercolour palette. There are, however, a million of different palettes to choose from. And they really fall into three categories of ceramic, plastic and tin. And each of them has got pros and cons depending on what you want them to do for you. I thought it'd be helpful to look at them in turn so you can decide which one meets your needs. And I do apologise for the state of my hands. I've just been cutting up a tube of quinacrolone gold. I mean, I guess the first thing is that we've got to distinguish there's a palette that you store your paints in and a palette that you mix your paints in. Now, if you use tubes, then you might not need something for storing. You might just squeeze out the colours you want into a palette each time you use it. If you want to use pans or you like squeezing out the tubes, letting them dry and reactivating them, then you need something that will store as well. Let's start with the tin palettes. Their big advantage is they're light and portable. So if you on the go, you know, they're, they're very convenient. You can change out the, the pans. So if you run out of your favourite colour or you want to add one in, you should be able to change those out. They're not breakable, which if you're as clumsy as I am, is a good thing. And they tend to be pretty cheap and cheerful. You can see this is a, a well-used palette. But let's have a look how easy it is to, to clean it up. We'll just put some water on and see. And we can clean that up. And there is some staining you will find particularly say the blues thallow blue is a notoriously staining color so you will get some staining but it's really not bad the other thing you might want to look at for a palette is how easy it is to to mix your colors onto to it do they all bead up or do they stay where you want so that you get nice smooth mixes and you'll find on the metal palette generally it does move around a bit but it doesn't bead up like you'll see on the plastic palettes in a moment so if you're going to an art class or you're painting outdoors things like that a little tin palette is a really good option for you plastic palettes are another good option they tend to be quite cheap they are lightweight you can get them smaller like this. I've added in lots of extra colours because it didn't come with everything I wanted. You can get bigger ones with far more colour choice. This was my very, very first palette that I got 25 years ago and it's still going. Or you can get empty palettes like this. If I can open it that you can then fill with your own colours if you want and this one has a thumb hole so that you can hold it and paint from it so all sorts of designs all sorts of price points trouble is plastic palettes have two particular drawbacks they tend to stain hopefully you can see there's a pink stain in there and of course once your palette has stained you may find it hard to judge your colour because you're not judging it against white. I can demonstrate that even better. I'm very fond of daisy wheel palettes because I find that makes me really plan my colours. So I tend to use tube watercolours. I plan my colours. I will only use maybe six tops seven colors in a painting i get a far more coherent painting if i use a limited palette but you can see how much staining i've got on this plastic palette 
And I get round that by generally putting the yellows in the stained yellow one and the blues in the stained blue and the purples in the stained purple. But it can be far harder to judge those colours than against, in this case, a lovely clean ceramic. And the other thing that you'll find as a downside is with a new palette like this, you will find that the colour tends to bead up rather than staying flat where you put it it tends to move and bead up you can just see those little white areas in the middle and that will wear off with time because you'll slightly wear down the surface and you won't get this beading but brand new palette that could be really annoying it will actually repel your watercolor as you can see here i have got a film which suggests a few different ways that you can speed up that that wearing in process to get rid of that beading but that beading is one of the big downsides of the, the plastic the final downside of these palettes is that with age they can actually become brittle i've said they're not breakable but actually with age they become more brittle and they can break as you can see this one yeah just to demonstrate quite how brittle it's become so the third material you might have for your palette is ceramic listen to that noise the big downside of ceramics is they're breakable just to demonstrate they chip i once rather stupidly had finished doing a demonstration for an art class and i was really pleased with how my painting was going but i hadn't finished it i would come to the end of the time so i wrapped my palette in some cling film so i could take it home finish the painting at home loading the car put it on top of the car while I put everything in so it didn't spill and then drove off with it on top of the car well obviously it smashed on the uh, car park floor as I drove off and that was the end of my palette ceramic palettes tend to be more expensive but there are some very cost effective places to get them so look out for the Meaden brand they have an amazing range of ceramic palettes at very very reasonable prices the other thing of course if you want to work on a ceramic palette is to improvise this actually came is is an egg carrier uh, it used to have a metal handle there and uh, we used to have chickens and I used to store our eggs in there well, that would make a perfect little palette, wouldn't it? Or just a plate like this, which you can buy very cheaply. And then you could put squidges of your tube colour around the side and then pull it into the middle to use that central mixing tray. You may be lucky and find little condiment dishes, things like that in secondhand shops. So you certainly can really improvise with ceramic palettes. Always make sure it's white. So that you can judge your colours against it a pattern will just confuse you but why are ceramic palettes so good to use let me demonstrate so ceramic palettes are just lovely for mixing colours you put the colour on and you don't get any of that beading that we were finding on the plastic this is a brand new palette i haven't done anything to it but i can mix straight on that surface and get a really smooth beautiful mix when i've finished and i want to clean it off i can literally wipe it off and i will not get any staining at all they tend to be more capacious is that such a word you know i have not got much space for mixing in here or that other plastic palette you you saw whereas even in this one which i thought was a really neat little design i can fill these pans with with the colors from my tubes and then use the lid as a nice mixing area so usually i'd say ceramic palettes are no good if you're going off to say a class or, or out and about but that i thought was a beautiful little design and if i was going to a class of course i think i would just for safety's sake put a few bands on it to make sure it didn't fall to pieces if i was painting doing urban sketching or i was out no i would not take that with me just because of the weight however that is such a nice neat design if you want all the benefits of ceramic as well as having your colors with you then 
maybe have a little look at that one. So how do you decide which one's the best for you? Well, partly it depends where you're painting, say whether you're out and about or whether you're painting in a studio. So think about that. Decide whether you like to use wet or dry paint. So if you like dry paint, things in plastic palettes or tin palettes, no problem. If you like to squeeze your paint out of tubes and use it wet, you might enjoy the ceramic more. Do you need a big mixing area? Do you want big washes? Then a capacious mixing palette is for you. If you're painting on a large sheet of paper, then you know this this size of mixing palette is just no good whatsoever. Think how many colours you want to hand. I said that I like to limit my colours to a painting, but of course I like to have plenty of colours to choose from. So think how much you want to limit your palette um, and therefore which palette will suit you. In this little one, let's how many were there? There's only 12 wells in this little ceramic palette. So you might feel that's not enough. But if you're trying to force yourself to really get into colour mixing, actually you only need three primaries don't you think about the weight of them and also maybe how clumsy you are think about what storage space you've got there are some absolutely enormous beautiful ceramic palettes that are definitely designed to stay in your studio and not go anywhere but maybe you won't have space for that if you don't have a dedicated painting area and you need to pack up every time then a smaller plastic palette could just be the thing that you want. One other thing to think about is really how fastidious you are. You may be having an absolute fit looking at some of these palettes and thinking, oh my goodness, you know, they are so dirty. How does she leave them like that? But of course, your, your dried paints can clean up very quickly, even if they've been become contaminated. If having clean paints is important to you, then possibly having a palette that you can squeeze fresh paint into each time will be more your cup of tea. hope that's given you a few things to think about so that you can choose the very best watercolour palette for your budget and your style of painting and what you want to do with it. And I just want to reiterate again that there is no such thing as the perfect palette. There's the perfect palette for you, but it might not suit other people. So choose what works for you.